so you know to to back up a couple of steps um uh, you know there there are there are of course two approaches to making an expression or to allowing an expression you know one is you open up the park or you open up the street or you open up public lands and, and allow people um you know reasonable access so they can present their opinions and if you if you allow one to do so you have to allow somebody else to do so so if you allow if you if you grant a permit and i'm just using you know, broad examples if you grant a permit uh, for a black lives matter ma march you're hard pressed you really have no basis for granting a uh, not granting a permit for a ku klux klan march for example and and so there there is you know and, and that is that's private expression private expression you know under certain circumstances can be regulated by the government but it can't be content uh, regulation. The government can't get into the business of saying, I like what you're saying, but I don't like what you're saying, so I'm not gonna let you do it, but I'll let you do it. So the government's expressions are not subject to content regulation. So government expression, which is an opinion of the government or a, a, a position of the government, is, is something that the government is entitled to express, and if the citizens don't like it, they get rid of the government. So, so if the mayor of a town allows certain expression and the citizens don't like it, it allows the government to express it, put, put a monument, for example, in the park, and the citizens don't like it, you know, their right is to vote out the mayor at the next election. But governments can't do business unless they're allowed to express their opinions. Um, and they do. And whether it's, you know, buy U.S. savings bonds or Black Lives Matter or, um, you know, don't speed, uh, support the war, whatever, whatever it is, they have an absolute right to do that. Um, and that speech is not regulated, you know, unless, unless it falls under some other aspect of the constitution, the government is pushing a religion, for example, right. but, but otherwise, yeah. so, so now how the question is, how do you make the speech government speech? Right. Um, and you know, these issues, gov the government speech doctrine is relatively new. It's not, it's not something that has a hundred years worth of you know, precedent, so it's been tested and we all know what it means. And, you know, one of the big cases that deals with this, this concept came out of Utah, I think it was 2009, it was a Supreme Court decision, and it had to do uh, with a statute that the, uh, that the uh, an opposing party wanted to put up because there was a Ten Commandments statute in a park that had statutes. And the government said, no, you can't do this. Um, and the Supreme Court went into, uh, you know, great uh, detail to talk about what is government speech, government expression, what is not. And, and one thing that they landed on, they, they, they talked about it over and over in this case, was permanent structures, permanent structures, permanent structures, a monument. The government is entitled to express its opinions through monuments. And it doesn't matter, the case said, whether the monument comes from volunteers or it comes from the government's coffers, as long as the government retains, you know, some right over the aesthetics and over the message. And then the government adopts it as its own message. Now, the problem, you know, lawyers, you know, lawyers are, are educated to pull, you know, to pull threads <laughs> until the fabric is gone. And one of the things that this case talks about is permanent monuments. Um, and, and, you know, and a per permanent monument is a stone statue or a metal statue that sits out in a park and weathers the pigeons in the rain. Um, and, and now you start talking about a mural on the street. And so the question is, okay, let's make that a government expression. And it doesn't matter who paints it. It doesn't matter who pays for it. Um, if, if the government approves the message and if the government approves the design, um, then it becomes a government message. But, but the question is, if, if you start looking at the precedent, where in the precedent is um, a case that talks about a non-permanent, you know, a one-year rubberized paint, you know, painting? And, and I'm not suggesting for a moment that that may not pass muster. But what I'm saying is, if, if, if I was going to, you know, try to um, at, at, attack that because I want to put up you know, my blue lives matter, or all lives matter, uh, or some other message, um, then I might say, you know, that case doesn't fall squarely within the Supreme Court jurisprudence because it is not a permanent 
structure. And that's what they intended. Now, the Supreme Court may look at um, you know, that argument and say, well, that's ridiculous. Um, and, 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 you know, and, and the Supreme Court doesn't decide cases on any broader sense than they have to at the moment. They, they're not going to throw examples in if it was this, that would work. If it was this, that would work. They're only dealing with what's in front of them. But there is no jurisprudence that says rubberized paint that lasts for six months or a year um, that may then disappear is a permanent monument, um, which has been defined, you know, potentially as government speech. Do, do I think that it, it would still pass muster? I, probably, but does but 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 do you still have some risk that you get drawn into, um, you know, a challenge? Because you're outside of precedent. You're outside of precedent. That's and, and, and a lawyer could bring that suit in good faith, you know, to test the boundaries of what the Supreme Court jurisprudence you know, really meant. And it, it would mean filing a, a, court, a case in the U.S. District Court in Baltimore. If you lost that case, it would go up, you know, to the uh, Fourth Circuit. Um, and if, you know, depending on what happened, maybe the Supreme Court would look at it, maybe it wouldn't. But, you know, you could be talking about six years, five years of uh, protracted litigation and cost. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, and, and unless some group was to design a permanent structure, you know, a monument, um, and, and, and say to the, and, and show the city, the town, here are the drawings of our proposed monument. Would you accept this from us? And it says Black Lives Matter across the base, and we're going to put it, you know, in Fountain Park. And the city says, yes, now you have some assurance because you're within the the four corners of this case. And, 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 and that is, of course, one of the reasons why government speech is, is protected, because the citizenry, if they don't like the speech, can remove the government, and the next government can remove the monument.